Guitars, Eric Andreas, your guitar sage here. Welcome to today's live webcast. We're live on Facebook and YouTube today. Today we're going to be talking about developing smooth strumming. This is all part of the whole series that we'll be doing in May, which is based off of the basics that most guitar players skip and regret. I wanted to do a series regarding these basics. You've seen me scatter them about throughout, and I wanted to create a whole month of this because a lot of people starting off the summer here, they're, they've got some time, they're going to start playing guitar. It's a perfect time, and guess what? A lot of people, so many guitar players, leave this stuff on the table. You don't believe me? Watch the questions today. You're going to see a lot of folks asking a lot of these questions that are going to be covered all during this month. I guarantee you that 90% of the questions that are asked today will be covered in this month of material. That's why I'm doing it. Um, yeah, so lots of good stuff. I have a PDF for you. While I'm jibber-jabbering here for a minute, I want you to click on that link. You'll see it uh, on Facebook or YouTube. You're going to see it. It says yourguitarsage.com slash bonus PDF. Do that right now. I'm going to drink some green barley water. What? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Um, so we're going to talk about these techniques today. You're downloading right now, though, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're downloading that PDF, and we're going to talk about that today, okay? Um, we're going to talk about these techniques. I'm going to be answering your questions in real time, and we'll be doing some giveaways. In fact, we'll be giving away this Dan Electro Cash Cow, which I think I just, I think the review just went up for this. So if you don't know anything about this, you need to check it out. Um, this Dan Electro Cash Cow is bad to the bone. It really is. This is part of their Billionaire series. They just came out with this, and Dan Electro sent this, uh, sent a bunch of pedals to me and this beautiful guitar. I'll be giving it all away after I've done reviews for them, which I'm all done with the reviews. So yes, we'll be giving, uh, giving those away. Uh, today I'll be giving this one away, but while you're still downloading the PDF at yourguitarstage.com slash bonus PDF that's in the description, of this video. Uh, while you're doing that and you're bringing it up, let me tell you, on May the 19th, we'll be doing another live webcast, our monthly live webcast. So we do these once a week where we get a few hundred people. And when we do the big monthly live webcast, it's typically a few thousand people. And it is a blast and we get lots of stuff away, thousands of dollars worth of goodies. In fact, today we'll be giving, or today we'll be giving away that pedal. But on May the 19th, I'll be giving away this beautiful Dan Electro D59 XT guitar. I just did a review for this. It's not out yet. It'll be out soon. Um, and the winner of that's gonna gonna win this guitar, gonna win four Dan Electro pedals, and a lifetime membership to my Unstoppable Guitar System, which is a four hundred dollar system. Uh, right there, that whole bit there is about a thousand bucks. But we'll be giving away other lifetime memberships to the Unstoppable Guitar System away. What, Eric? You're mad. I am. I'm mad. Um, now, really, I just love doing that. It's really fun, and it's my way of giving back. Cause you guys give so much to me. So here we go. You've downloaded the PDF. We're getting ready to jump in on this. So today we're going to be talking about strumming. Uh, it'd be really cool if I had a pick. Oh, look, here's a pick. Um, I didn't have one. Um, so we'll be talking about the techniques today. I'll be answering your questions, and then that's it. Then the show today will last probably an hour. Uh, the actual lesson will probably last about a half hour and to 45 minutes, and then the rest will be questions. Okay, cool. From you on Facebook and YouTube. Here we go. Uh, um, by the way, it, in order to get involved in that live webcast that we're doing on May the 19th, go to yourguitarstage.com slash live. 99% of the links that I'm going to be telling you today are in the description of the video, so there you go. So if you're looking for them and you're like, what was that? Look in the description of the video, okay? Okay, here we go. All right, so strumming technique, right? I asked if you guys have clock-like strumming technique. Why did I say it like that? Well. Because really, when it comes to strumming, the strumming should be as integral a part of the rhythm as the drummer. Obviously, not as loud as the drummer, but definitely not as annoying as the drummer also. All right? The, the, the strumming rhythm should inflect what the drum's doing, what, what the drums are doing, and, and typically what the whole band is doing. Okay? 
But we've got, before we start thinking like that, because I get the question a lot, how do we extrapolate strumming from a particular song in order to say, well, this is the strumming for that song? That's a great question. I know that will be asked about 17 times today, and so I'm definitely going to answer it later when we're talking about it. But right now, we're just going to be talking about the simple technique of strumming. That's all we're going to be talking about. We'll get, to the, we'll get to all the rest in the questions. Okay, so let's talk about it for a minute. Strumming, obviously, is when we take a pick and we're hitting the strings like this, right? Some people say, ah, I don't do that, I use my thumb. I can't, be, uh, I can't be bogged down with a pick. Grab your dang pick and learn how to use a pick and let's grow up, let's put our big boy girl pants on, our big boy pants, our big girl pants, and let's learn how to use a pick today, okay? It's seriously, it's really important that you use a pick. There's a reason why most people use a pick is because it makes the guitar sound better, it's louder. Yes, I was just finger picking, that's a whole nother thing, that can be done too. You gotta do both, okay? You don't wear red all day long, you wear red, you wear blue, you wear green, you wear different colors. So learn how to use your pick, okay? Good, you're doing that. So we're using the pick. When we're strumming, oh, and to start off too, the size of the pick or the thickness of the pick really matters. Seriously, okay? If you're using a thicker pick and you're a new strummer, okay, what's gonna happen is it's gonna wanna pull out of your hand because, think about this for a minute, if you had long, curly, bushy hair and you were using a fine tooth comb and you're like, I'm just gonna yank right through this, you're gonna hit knots and that comb's gonna get stuck. But if you used a brush with very uh, fine bristles or you know one that, that where the bristles gave, then you're not gonna run through too many problems, okay? You're gonna, you're gonna comb your hair, if you hit a knot, it's gonna go right past it. Same thing is happening when we're talking about the pick. If you're using a very stiff pick, if you're using like a heavy, what's gonna happen is you're getting used to this little critter, right? And you're hitting the strings and it's gonna wanna yank out of your hand, it's gonna fall on the floor. So do yourself a favor, go to the local guitar store, get them from online or whatever, and pick away, my friend, Get, get yourself some different gauged picks, okay? Strum away. Uh, this one right here is a .60, and this to me is like the Quan. I'm right, right where I should be with this. Any thinner than this, I don't like it. Uh, any thicker than that, I, then now I'm, I, I would rather use it for lead guitar, okay? So there's a time to use a thick pick. It's when you're doing more intricate type things, but when you're talking about all the strings, you should be using a thinner pick. I'm just saying that it's gonna be easier for you. If you wanna use a thicker pick, then do it if it works for you. But just try me out on this. If you're having issues with strumming, use a thinner pick. It's gonna help you a ton, okay? So with that being said, let's talk about the technique. So when we're strumming, we are, we should be in tandem with the down and up beat, okay? Think about it. You've got a song playing, right? Uh, back in black, bum, ba da da you can hear my foot tapping. These are down beats when I hit my foot like that, okay? They're the, the, the loudest beat, okay? As opposed to the antithesis of that, which is the upbeat, right? So my hand comes up, pop, 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 pop. That's the upbeat, okay? We're going to use both of them. We need to be able to identify both of them as well. So, downbeat is when our foot hits the ground, upbeat is when our foot comes up, typically, okay? I say typically because it depends on how quickly you're tapping your foot. But usually, if you're counting like that, bump, ba da da, ba da da, that's a downbeat, ba da 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 da, right? And the upbeat's the opposite of that. Now, here's 99% of the reason why people mess up when they're strumming. I'm not joking, 99% of the reasons is because. Their down strum and their up strum, or I should say it this way, their down strum's not in tandem with the down beat, and their up strum's not in tandem with the up beat, meaning they're not in sync. That's 99% of the reasons why you, why me, why anybody messes up their strumming is because that part's not in sync. I told you this stuff is basic, but these are the basics that people skip, and they're like, well, why do I suck at strumming? Because you didn't cover the basics because you jumped right over it. Everybody does it, okay? It's not your fault. So we gotta learn this technique. It's super easy. So let's. this is where we're gonna start. Just like a real basic drum beat, we're gonna start with a real basic strum, and it's this one. Everybody knows how to do this one. In fact, of 
the thousands of one-on-one -on -one lessons that I've taught, I've never seen someone not be able to do this. I've seen them be able to not do a lot of other things, but I have never seen them not be able to do this. If you're the first person, it's okay. Just means we need to do a little bit more work, that's all, okay? So, let's, let's talk about it. So, what I want you to do is take your fretting hand, I want you to lay it on the strings as light as a feather. Just light, lightly, lightly as a feather, okay? And then what you do is take your pick and just pick down, down strums, okay? On the beat. So if our beat is two, three, four, one, two. In fact, let's slow it down. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. You're gonna take a pick and you're gonna go one, two, three, four. Now you can hear that there's no chord playing. There's none of, nothing like that because I'm taking my fretting hand, I'm laying it on the strings as lightly as a feather, kind of like a, a, a sponge, like, Think about your hands just being like, just laying there. We're not trying to activate any strings. Just lay them on there so it's nice and percussive. We're doing that for a reason. Trust me, just do it, okay? Doesn't matter where you're holding it. We're just trying to get that clicky sound instead of chords singing out. That's gonna be very distracting and loud. Don't do that. We want that sound, okay? So you're taking your pick, you're just going down, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. That's all we're doing, okay? Now, easy enough, right? Now, for every downbeat that you hit, for every down strum that you hit, you have to bring your hand back up. One, and two, and three, and four, and. But what you're doing is you're purposely choosing not to hit the strings. You probably didn't know that, but that's what you're doing. You're purposely not hitting the strings. Because you're hitting them going down there, but then you're kind of missing them coming up purposely, right? Because I didn't tell you to do this. I told you to do this. One, two, three, four. So naturally, what's happening is, if you look at it from the profile here, what's happening naturally is my pick is hitting the strings, but then I pull it out coming up. Just kind of pull away from the guitar a little bit, right? In order to double it up, the only thing I've got to do is keep the pick in the same basic direction to get that down and up strum, okay? Up, down, up, down. I know this is kind of basic, but just we're going, we're going to get more advanced here in a second, but we got to cover this part because there are folks out there that aren't doing this and we got to help them, okay? You were there at one point too, so come on, be, be cool. Let's be cool, right? All right, so we got down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, down, up. So we got down beat, up beat, down beat, up beat, down strum, up strum, down, up strum, up strum. They should always be in tandem, okay? We don't want to stray from this. We, we, we want them in tandem. And once we learn this, it's going to make everything a lot easier, okay? So the second strum that I want you to do is this down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Let's do it together for a little bit here, okay? Just to get the feel of it. Remember to do that percussive bit with the fretting hand. If you can't, if it, if it seems hard to do and you're getting noises out of it, just go lighter. Just think like you're just barely putting your hand on those strings, at least on the, on the fretting hand. As the strumming hand, you're hitting the strings pretty hard, okay? That's all we're gonna do, okay? So there's two strums so far. It's the down strum and then the down, up, down. Down, up, down, up. Now, if you are looking at the PDF, which you should be, you should have it opened up in another uh, in another tab. So please do that right now. Click on that PDF because we're gonna. There's a reason you got to do this. All right, you're doing it. You're doing it. I'm waiting, and there you go. Good. Oh, good. Your listeners. Okay, so uh, we got our down strum, we got our up strum, and you see. Now, go a couple pages in. In fact, I'll tell you how many pages in because I'm looking at the same PDF here, or I will be at least. Uh, hey, who's that guy on YouTube? That's me. Okay, so, okay, page two, page three, page four. Okay, so we're going to go straight to page four. I want you to read one through three when we're done, okay? But right now, I'm going to be telling you basically what's going on, okay? So you're going to see... On page, what, what level, what page did I say? I said, okay, we got a title page and then we got one, two, third page, okay? Uh, including the, the title page. 
uh, it says level one, okay? And we did the one at the top there that says one, two, three, four, right? We did that. The second one is going to be one and two and three and four and, okay? Now, those are easy ones, right? Because they're very symmetrical. But when we start changing that symmetry, our mind gets messed with, okay? And later on, I'm going to show you what really gets messed with, okay? So this third one down, it says one and two and three and four blank, okay? By the way, the pluses are and, so you want to say that. And we always say the number on the downbeat, and we say and on the upbeat, okay? So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Make sense? Okay, good, good. So we got the first two down. Now with the third one, we're skipping the and. Okay, so it's gonna go like this. One and two and three and four and. Now what happens sometimes, later on, you're, most people, 90% of the people do this, but for this one right here, uh, most people don't mess this up. But some of you will, and I'm going to show you how you mess it up. Here it goes. Uh, what happens is because there's that blank there, because you're not doing anything, it, they, they'll say one and two and three and four and. And for the and, since you're not doing anything, they stall down here. And they go one and two and three and four and. And now the next strum is an up strum, but that doesn't make sense because it's a downbeat, right? It has to be a downbeat. A down strum for a down beat. So this is what they're doing. They're going one and two and three and four and one and two. Now they're all freaking backwards. I don't like that. You don't like that. No one likes it because it throws our strumming off. Okay. So what you got to do is you have to keep moving your hand even though there's no strum happening. Okay. It's called the ghost strum and it's in, you, you must do it. Any great funk player or great strummer at all knows that you got to keep that hand going. It's like a metronome. It's a clock. And what happens when you lose that momentum is you lose that momentum. So now your your timing goes off. You've got to reevaluate, you know, the whole nine yards. It would be like doing anything that you're in the flow of. You ever heard that? The flow or the zone when you're doing great and then you stop or someone stops you or whatever, it's like they, now you got to go through that whole routine of starting over again. That's where timing issues happen. And just the fact that you're going to be the opposite of where you were, that's also going to mess you up, okay? So here's what we need to do. For that third one down, we're going to go one and two and three and four and. And I'm whispering and to, to you know, signify that we're not going to do anything there. You can use your own technique, but I find it's helpful to say something there so that you can audibly hear where that note should be, but you're not, but it's it's a whisper so you know not to actually strum it. And with that whisper, you're going to be bringing your hand up. So, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. This is where the rubber meets the road is this first one right here. The other two most people can get. This is where it starts. This is where the challenge starts. And I've got another one. We're, gonna, we're not going to do all of these, but we're going to skip forward. And I'm going to show you another one that you're definitely going to have an issue with, okay? Um, most folks do. So, uh, so this is what you're going to do. One and two and three and four and. Okay, and what you're going to do outside of what we're doing right now. So for your practice, uh, you're going to be you're going to be practicing these. Okay, you're 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 going to be taking these home. Uh, you're at home because you're not here, but you're going to be taking them and practicing them. Okay, on your own. How long should you practice them? It depends. Um, I have a real, a definitive way to measure this, and it goes like this. Uh, if you want to be, you know, I basically break it up into three different levels. Uh, good, uh, mediocre, or I should say not good, mediocre, and excellent. Um, some of you know my method here, my methodology, uh, but I've got these three different areas. And so if you're totally good, if you're totally fine with sucking, then don't practice much. Okay, so if you're that person where you're like, it really doesn't matter, uh, I'm totally fine with sucking, then don't practice much, and that's great. If you're totally fine with mediocrity, then just practice kind of just a little bit, you know, just practice in the middle. Don't don't overdo it, but don't don't be that guy who totally sucks. Just be the guy who's just, no one really notices them, you know, and just be right in the middle there, 
um, do that. But if you want to be excellent, then you want to practice excellently. You know where you want to practice it a lot. You want to really get it down impeccably. Now that sounds as absolutely ridiculous. That's because it is. That's life, and that's how people treat life and everything about it. So it's really important that we that we excel and that we go for excellence. Anything that we want to do at, go for this guy over here. Go for this gal. This is the one we want to do. Practice it a lot. So how much should you realistically practice a day? Well, I'd say in the beginning, if you're, if you're really wanting to get good at strumming, it would be great to practice this a good half hour a day. Just strumming, okay? Uh, that's, your, that's your challenge. How about that? If you're doing 15 minutes, let's go for a uh, half hour. If you're doing a half hour, let's go for 45 minutes or an hour. Challenge yourself. Make it more difficult. That's where the quan is at. That's where you're really going to get the juice, okay? So we've done number three here. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. And, okay? So the next one, and I'm just going to do one more and then we're going to skip down. Uh, the next one, and I also find this is very helpful, is to is to say it before you actually play it. Why? Because how is your anatomy going to follow something that your brain doesn't know? Right? That's a very logical question, but people do this all the time. I see it all the time. I used to see it in my one-on-one -on -one lessons all the time. People just would take off, start strumming, and hope that somehow, even though they don't mentally understand something, it's going to get in them somehow and they're going to be able to play it. That will never happen. It's never happened in a million years. Um, that's like, you know, you know, throwing a bunch of toothpicks in the air and hoping they, they form a, a house or something symmetrical. It's not going to happen. So you've got to mentally think about this first. And the way to prove it to yourself that you have it mentally is to count it out loud first. So that fourth one down, we're going to say one and two and three four and or you could whisper that and you could say one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and make sense that's how you want to practice all of these you want to say it first the missing parts you want to whisper them or don't say them at all but you need something to keep you in time because you're going to have that same thing it's a, that whisper is a reminder of where the beat is at Okay, and it's very helpful. So I'm imploring you to do that. Okay, if you find another technique that works for you, if you're using a metronome or tapping your foot, that's okay too. But something has to keep you in time. Okay, especially in the beginning, time is developed. Okay, it's not it's not given to you at birth. It's developed with everybody since the beginning of time. Amen. Ask anybody who's good at timing. Ask them if they practice and how much they practice. Okay, so one and two, uh, one and two and three. Four and so that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna whisper it. Also, you're gonna do it in a seamless loop, meaning when you get to the end, there's no one and two and three, four and one. You're not gonna do that. You're gonna seamlessly loop it. Okay, it's like you won't know where the scene is at. So one and two and three, four and one and two and three, four and one and two and three. And Four. So that when you start strumming it, you've mentally got it here. It goes to your brain, goes to your hand, now it goes to your pick, and your pick does all the magic. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Okay, so that's what you're going to do. Now, as you get, you want to get accurate at this. Speed is a byproduct of accuracy. It never comes before it. So I always tell my students, don't ever focus on speed. Don't, 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 don't. If you want to be the fastest player in the world, don't focus on speed. Focus on accuracy because accuracy, when you do something accurate enough so many times, speed just happens. It's not like you can just become fast by leapfrogging accuracy. Uh, I've heard guitar players do this where they're just trying to play fast and it sounds terrible and they're not tricking anybody. It sounds like crap. Okay, so accuracy. You always want to go for accuracy. So just with these, just be accurate. If you want to get faster at it, then you can slowly creep up the speed. So one and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three. That sort of thing, okay? So you'll speed it up slowly, 
okay? And remember to keep loose too. You don't wanna be tightening up because that's really gonna mess you up. Okay, so a lot of folks, they'll have problems with that number three. Everybody has problems with the first one on the fourth page here of, uh, let's see, is it? No, 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 I, I take that back. Let's see, one, one, where is it? Well, I swear it's here. Oh, i tell you which one it is. I'll tell you what. We're going to go to the very last one on level five. Now, the reason I'm giving you this one as opposed to a, an easier one is the cool thing about this very last one on level five is it is literally the most used strum in all of music since the beginning of time to the end of time, amen. And I feel so sure about that because I've only done like over a thousand videos on YouTube and you'll, you'll hear me say it. I'll say this is level five, the last one in level five if you're in my course, by the way, I'll say that. And 80% um, and of the songs that I teach, that's what happens. And I'm not specifically teaching songs that have that strumming, I'm just teaching songs. And Lo and behold, that is the strumming pattern that it, that it is. Why is that? It's because it's just integrated into the way that we hear music, the way that we play music, drums and all that stuff. It's a very strong beat, okay? So with all that being said, the great thing about this is, even though it'll be challenging, the last one in level five, if you learn that one, you'll know the strumming rhythm to like 80% of the songs out there, 70%, something like that. Okay, so you're looking at it, you're looking at your PDF that, that everybody's talking about, that you can find in the link that is in the description of the video, yourguitarsage.com slash bonus PDF. So you're looking at that right now. We're on the very last page, level five, okay? And um, the one, two, N, and four N, okay? We're looking at that. So here's what you wanna do. I'm gonna say it out loud, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna slow this one down a little bit. So here's our beat, one, two, three, or we're gonna say this thing out loud first. So here we go. One, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four. And I'm using my finger now to keep in time, okay? Before I was whispering everything, okay? Two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and so this is our downbeat, upbeat, or down strum, up strum. And so now that we can say that, okay, now we gotta get the hand over here. Now here's where the mental block becomes, uh, happens. With, when we miss an upbeat like we did in the very last one, when we do that, that seems to be a very natural thing, but, but skipping over a down strum, you'll know it when you try to play this, you'll be like, whoa, mental block, okay? Uh, until then, you're not gonna know what I'm talking about, otherwise, when you skip a down strum, so in this case here, the three is gone, okay? The and of one is gone, and the three is gone. The and of one is not a problem, but when you get to that three, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be like, well, what do I do there? And that's what most people do. So we've gotta mentally do this, we have to do it slow. And here's another technique that I wanna to talk to you about. Uh, those that are in my course, uh, which I think this may be covered in the free course, which if you're interested in that, the top 30 lessons I teach all my students, you'll see the link for that that's in the description of this video. Thousands of people have gone through this. I say thousands, I swear, I think I just talked with my web guy the other day and I think, I think he said 100, over 100,000 people have been through this. So I think I have that number right. If I don't have it right, I'll tell you next time, but I'm pretty sure, because he'll tell me if I didn't get it right. Um, we like to be honest here, okay? Um, so all that being said, it's absolutely helping folks all around the globe and other places too in the universe. All right, so here we go. One, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and, okay? Oh, and the, I was gonna tell you that, that in that course, big strumming is one of the lessons that I have, something I call big strumming. And the idea is this, is at first you're taking real um, wide, very big strums at the strings. Why is that? Because if you're taking smaller <laughs> strums, which ultimately is what you wanna end up doing, but at the beginning, if you take these big wide strums, it's going to ensure you're gonna know if you're falling out of this whole clockwork thing that I mentioned, right? The one and two and three and four. And because if your hand's not doing this real steady bit, if you're going one and two and three and four, 
and one. And now you're going to feel that. Phys you're going to feel it in your physiology. Oh, wow, I stalled. And, but if you're doing small strums, you're going to be like, How, now where did I get, go wrong? So that's another little technique to use. Write it down right now, big strumming. If you're in the course, you know what I'm talking about. So we're going to do this big, all right? So one, two, and, and four. And you can also do this in the air before you go to hit the guitar. And that's a great bit to do too because it keeps your, it, it starts the momentum going, okay? So do this, trust me. Go one, two, and, and four. And 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 one, two, and three. And four. It might be able to, it might be helpful if you whisper three. Okay, let's try it again. Four, one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four. Makes sense? Now, here's the deal. It's not just you. I guarantee you that 99% of the folks that are watching this right now are having issues with this, okay? So it's not you, you're not brain dead, there's not something wrong with you. In fact, everything's right with you. If you just started strumming and you just get this all of a sudden, then there's something very different about you because that means you're unlike any guitar player that I've ever met in my life. The thousands of one-on-one -on -one lessons that I've taught, that means you're different than those thousands of people and you just automatically get strumming, okay? And if so, then you need to start your own YouTube channel and start teaching some guitar because then you're magical, okay? Everybody should have a problem with this at first. Why wouldn't you? I don't know about you, but I suck at Spanish. I suck at it. You know why? Because I don't study it. I also suck at uh, at Swedish. Swedish? I don't know. Is that a... I don't know. You know what I mean? I suck at German and I've got German blood. It's like my father was born in Berlin. I don't, I wasn't taught it. So I don't know it. I know like a prayer and that's it. Uh, you know what you know because you practice it, not because you were born with something, right? So you get it? Okay. You should have a problem with this. And here's the good news. The brain is absolutely incapable. Listen to me. It's absolutely incapable of not getting better if you practice something. It's impossible to practice something, whether it's good, whether it's bad, you know, the wrong technique or the good technique, it's impossible to practice something and not get better at it. That's why you wanna make real sure that you're practicing the right stuff. That's why I created the free guitar series that's in the, the description of the video. It's at the top 30 lessons I teach all my students because uh, I had so many people email me comments, uh, social media, all the rest, and say, hey, what about this, what about this, what about this? You'll see the questions come up today. They're gonna be covered in that 30 lessons. Watch me, and watch, I guarantee you, watch, I'll say it over and over again, that they're covered in that in that series because that's those are the problems that people are having issues with. So if you haven't started that series, then by goodness, my friends, you gotta do it, okay? So start that series at some point here after the broadcast, yourguitarsage.com slash 30, do that, okay? So, with all that being said, um, here's what you want to do: is you want to you want to read this PDF over. When we're all done here, you want to read that PDF over, and you want to start at level one again, using the techniques that I talked about. Trust me when I say this. Do them. I know sometimes you're going to think, "Why is he having me do this?" Just trust me, because as you go through the process, it's going to start unfolding and making total sense to you, and you're going to be like, "Oh, wow! There's the light." Okay, cool. That's what you're going to do. Uh, oh, look, my cuz just joined up. What's up, cuz? Um, all right, so there you go. So here's what we're going to do. Shout out to Shelby. Um, and so you're going to practice this very slowly. You're going to start with level one. You're going to go through it nice and slow. And then you're going to do level two, nice and slow. Slow and steady wins the race. It's not about racing through this and getting you know super fast right away. It's not going to happen. It happens when it happens. It's like going to the gym and thinking that you're just gonna gonna lift the biggest weights and bingo bango jango. It's not like that. You it's gonna take as long as it takes. But the more practice you do, the more times you go to the gym, that is going to quicken the process. But it's still going to take X amount of time, focus time. Okay? Good? 
Does that make sense? Hopefully I covered that in detail. But let's get to some questions because I want to make sure that we did um, that we did get to everything. I want to make sure that you don't have any issues. Now, you can ask me questions regarding this, or you can ask me questions regarding my equipment, or gear in general, or anything about guitar, or life in general, for that matter. Uh, we're here, I'm, I'm here to answer questions and to get you guys on the right page. Very quickly, two things. While you're getting your questions uh, ready, because we've got a 30 second delay on Facebook and YouTube, uh, for the, you're getting your questions ready, um, really quickly, couple things. The free course, you know where that's at in the description of this video, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. The PDF is in there as well for those folks that don't know what we're talking about. Um, there is this whole Beginner May series that you're going to see underneath that PDF, which is going to be inside of the Unstoppable Guitar System. So basically, I'm inviting you into my massive guitar course for free, and you'll see what that's like. So that Beginner May series is all the stuff we're going to be talking about this month which are the basics that most guitar players that most guitar players skip and regret. You don't want to miss these. I promise you. There's a reason I'm teaching them. And there's a reason why they are the top 30 lessons I teach out of all the thousands of lessons that I've ever taught. They're the top 30, okay? They're really going to get you on the right page. So definitely start that, okay? Um, what else? Uh, share this video. If you share this video, friends, we're picking more than five winners. Uh, we're going to be giving away uh, CDs today. We're going to be giving away ebook bundles. We're going to be giving away um, uh, what, uh, signed books. We're going to be giving away, um, oh, some winner is going to win this beautiful billionaire series cash cow distortion video, which I just did a review for. And this thing is very surprisingly amazing. I say surprisingly because I don't know. I just like Dan Electro. I didn't know they made pedals. Now they do, and it's and it's amazing. I love their guitars. They make great stuff, uh, but the pedal is is amazing. So that's going to go away to a, to somebody today. Okay, let's get to some questions, shall we? So you share the video. Anything else that I didn't mention? Oh, the live broadcast. YourGuitarSage.com/live. Uh, although don't go there yet because I don't think we're ready there yet. But this guitar is going away on May the nineteenth, along with thousands of dollars worth of goodies. So just mark in your calendar. May the 19th, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, I'm going to be teaching you this. Basically, it's a, a mental way to understand the chords. I'm using uh, colors, and it's absolutely going to get you to go, oh, dear Lord, where was Eric when I was learning this way back when? Okay, so you'll want to watch this, okay? All right, let's get to those questions, starting on Facebook, and then we'll head over to YouTube. Okay, here we go. And I don't think actually that we've got any questions on Facebook. Boy, my computer's going real slow here. What's up, Carmela? What's up, Jason? Juan, Gert, Jennifer? All right, nice. Jennifer's putting her PDFs on her Kindle. That's right, they do work there. Oh, I write the color on this thing, right, Cindy? Yeah, I, I love it too. It's crazy cool. Oh, my other cuz. What's up, cuz, Gabriel? Um, what's up, brother? Yeah, this guitar is actually, it's a bluish green. Right now, it's showing very green to you guys, or at least it is on my monitor, but uh, it's kind of bluish, you know? A little bit more blue. I think they, uh, yeah, they call it some sort of blue. It's a Dan Electro. It's a D59 XT, uh, Daniel. Eric, the Tony Stark of the guitar world. I love that. I might use that. The Tony Stark of the guitar world. Oh, look, mom's here. My mom is in the room. I won't tell you who that is, but my mom is watching. Always watching. All right. I'm um, getting down to the end of the questions here, or at least the end of this chat. For some reason, it's going very slow. Okay, so here we go. Now, I'm, I'm jumping over to, to YouTube because uh, we got to the one question that was there, okay? Sarah, no, you don't want to suck. See? Sarah's got the right idea. See, there's suck, and then there's not suck. And if you had a choice, mm, suck or not suck, which one do I want? You want not suck. And Sarah's got it. She's nailed it right on the head. You do not want to suck, Sarah. Good for you. Uh, okay. Jingle Bells timing. 
Should we practice blindfolded? No. Just practice with your eyes. It's totally fine. If you want to get better at not, yes, I actually have a video on this. If you want to not look at the strings, then cut the lights off or blindfold yourself. It's great. And here's why is because there's this thing that we do where we say, okay, I'm going to just close my eyes. I won't look at the guitar. And then we're playing, we're playing, we're playing or with anything like this where you allow yourself to cheat. So if you're going to go on a diet, you don't say, oh, I'm just not going to touch the Cheetos. No, get the Cheetos out of your house. This will assure that you're, you're going to have to go through a few extra steps to get Cheetos. You're going to have to go down to the local store, right? So get the Cheetos out of your house. If you're going to really, if you really want to learn how to play guitar without looking at it, because for whatever reason that's a goal of yours, then put a blindfold on or cut the lights. Go into a dark room and play guitar because when something gets difficult, there's this tendency to cheat. You know, oh, I'm going to look for that one. Well, that's the one time that would have helped you out so much. It's the struggle that's that, that, that really gets you. If you can push through a struggle, that's the thing that makes you grow. Whether you're working out or you're playing guitar or you're doing anything in life, it's the struggle. You find the struggle, ooh, grab a hold of that thing, man, because that's the thing that's going to help you. It's not the easy stuff. Babies do the easy stuff. It's the hard stuff that gets you there. Sounds counter to what you know what we what we think, but I promise you that's where the good stuff's at. Uh, okay, here we go. I told you these questions will show up in this free series all the time. Rihan Amid is saying, "What's a basic finger picking exercise?" Rihan, a basic finger exercise. I'm going to give you not only a, a basic finger exercise, I'm going to give you like two or three. In fact, in that course, there's a lot more than that. Uh, there's ver 24 variations on it. What I want you to do, Rihan, is click on the link. It's, just, it's a totally free course that I created. Or if you came to visit me here in Nashville, it would cost you at least a thousand bucks to do the same exact lessons with the same dude, same guitar, same studio and everything. Or you can get it for free. The link's in the description of the video, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. So Rihan, what you want to do is you want to practice exercise number one and number two. Those are in the free course, and those are the basic exercises that you want to look at. The reason I'm not going over with them with you right now is I've, I've taught them in these live lessons like a thousand times, and it's going to take like 10 minutes to really, truly teach it the way it should be taught. Um, so Rihan, please uh, do that. And anybody else who wants to take advantage of this this free course do it okay can you show a johnny cash a uh, strum pattern i will and in fact um evan if you look on the pdf right now evan's saying he wants a johnny cash strum pattern if he uh, evan if you look on number one level four this is in the free pdf that's in the description of the video level four the first one one or i'm sorry that's not it it is number, well, where is it, son? I'll tell you. I'll tell you in just a second. Why, heck, I know it's here. It's one, two, three, and four, and. I'm looking for it. I know I've got it. And here it is. Here it is. It's number two, level two. Okay, number two, level two, this is on the third page of the PDF. It says one, two, three, and four N, Evan. And so we want to say it out loud. One, two, three, and four. And 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 one, two, three, and Three and four. You're saying, how's that, Johnny Cash? Hang on. Three and four. And one, two, 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 three and Oh, 
idea right one two three and four and but you've got to start there you can't start at what i just did you gotta start nice and slow you know what i'm saying okay uh let's jump over to more questions right all right hope hopefully i didn't skip any there hold on um you should practice blindfolded right 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 okay so Recommendations for transitions from the muted strum technique to using chords and chord transitions. James is saying, great question, James. This is covered in the free series. So anything that I talked to you about, we'll talk about this one, James, because I don't get to ask this one a ton, but it is in the free series, okay? The free series I'm talking about, yourguitarstage.com slash 30. Here's the deal. Uh, so recommendations for transitioning uh, from the muted technique, what we were just doing, to the actual playing the chords and chord transitions. So there's like two techniques there, really. And let's talk about them. So the first one is how do you go from the clicky bit to actually playing the chords? That's the first one, right? So we're going to go uh, one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One. In fact, I'm going to turn this down a little bit. Okay. So how do we transition? One, two, three, and four is to go and just grab that chord, grab it, know that you're playing it well, and then one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, one, two. So just practice it like that, nice and slow. Really, the answer to this, James, is nice and slow. That's the number one answer for you, but there's some specifics, but nice and slow is the part that people want to skip and just do what I'm telling them. Nice and slow is the bigger part of the answer here. Do what I'm saying, but nice and slow. If you're not adding nice and slow, you're not doing it right. So do it nice and slow. Or just slow for that matter. Uh, nice is... That'll happen by itself if you do it slow. Okay, so then the next thing to do is you got to give enough space. This is why we're doing it slow. You have to give yourself enough space to give yourself enough time to go from one chord to transition to another. What I suggest people to do is actually transition from one chord to the next without any sort of strumming. Inside that free series, I have a, a lesson that talks about a juggling unicyclist on a tightrope. Real nutshell scenario here. You got somebody who can juggle, someone who can ride unicycles, someone that can walk a tightrope. They can't do all three together, but they could if they practice two of those things. Okay, that's so they good at juggling, they're good at riding a unicycle. Well, one day you could get on the unicycle and start juggling, but maybe par it down a little bit. So that's kind of what we want to do is we want to do we want to separate things. So in this case here, if you're not good at tra at transitioning from a from a an E to an A, like I just did for Folsom Prison Blues, which I teach on YouTube, if, if that's a problem for you, then is adding strumming going to help or hurt you? Well, it's going to hurt, right? It's going to make it harder because you don't have the unicycle down and now you're adding juggling and it really will malfunction your brain. You'll just be like, I'm not doing this. I suck at this. I'm going to go play some video games. Don't do that. Just do the right technique, which is just strumming from one technique, you know, one uh, chord to the next. That's what I call transitions. And I have lots of videos for this, okay? Check out the free series. Let's say you got that down. You're like, Eric, I can do that. I'm talking about strumming from the E to the A. Good. Okay, so we're on to part three. In that case, you're going to go nice and slow, right? One, two, three, and four, and one, two. you're like, well, Eric, I don't even, I can't even do it that fast. Okay. Leave the chord earlier. The first part of the chord, the very first beat that you play a chord is the most important part. What a lot of times people do is they hang out on the last chord too long. They don't arrive at the next chord on time. That's the worst thing they can do. Leave the last chord early beyond time for the first, for, for the next chord. That's like life, you know, leave your last meeting early to be on time for your next one. Don't I was late because I was Don't do that. I don't like that guy. Okay, be on time. So you want to go one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and. Now, did that sound a little weird? A little bit, but you got to leave the last chord early to get to the next chord on time. So that's between that and going nice and slow. That's how you want to do it. Cool. All right. Good. 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 What's a basic finger picking exercise? Uh, I got that one right. We talked about that one. 
We did talk about that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I'm learning chords as well. Should I mix strumming and chords or should I practice them separately? I just answered that one, didn't I, devil boy? Practice them separately and then slowly start bringing them together. Devil boy, watch. Uh, although you may be diametrically opposed to the song that I teach, which is, which is Amazing Grace, but uh, which is like one of the last lessons in that free series. But Devil Boy, watch that free series because I teach a real basic song and I teach you how to transition and how to change chords. But it's not even so much learning the song as it is learning the technique to learn other songs. You can take that exact technique and plug it into any song that you learn and you're gonna be good to go. If you don't know that technique, you're gonna be lost, okay? Really important that you understand that. Rahan, I use acoustic strings and use 12s. Uh, they're really hard to bend. Will putting on 11s help with bending or should I use 10 gauge strings? Rahan, don't do that. Use thick strings on your acoustic guitar because thin strings sound, number one, they sound terrible. Number two, no one really cares if you're bending on an acoustic or not. Uh, and number three, your intonation will be out. Just the way, that's how acoustic guitars are. They like thick strings. I don't know why. They just do, you know. Jerry is saying, uh, one headlight, how to, please, second request. I stop at three. <laughs> Jerry, uh, I would love to do that one. There's, I, you know, I get so many requests, Jerry. I wish I could do that and the other thousands of requests that I've gotten. Um, it's just there's only so much time. But I do love that song. Maybe maybe one day I will. Oh, I said your name right, Rihan. Thank you so much. Yay. Love it. How to play accents with strums and how to practice accents. Uh, uh, Basim is saying. Uh, Basim, so you, you know, an accent is when you just play something louder. So I just did it on Folsom Prison, right? I went... So they hear the fast, this fast strum is. Notice my hand come way up here on the strum. On the accent, right? So what you want to do for an accent is you just want to hit it harder. So right before you hit that one harder, you lift your hand up and really dig in. Without the accent, it would sound like this. It's just very mechanical, right? So those accents really make will make your strumming sound nice and alive, you know? Mr. Sage, do you have a Blues Licks type DVD out that I can purchase? Noodle. I do not, Noodle84. I don't do DVDs. It's going away. That technology is going away. I do everything streaming and I have a whole blues course, Noodle. If you don't know about this, my friends, you got to know this. It's in my advanced section of the Unstoppable Guitar System. That's like if you're very serious about playing guitar um, and you're tired of like jumping around from YouTube video to YouTube video, you go to Unstoppable Guitar System. Uh, the, the free guitar series, the, the yourguitarstage.com slash 30 is like basically the first 30 lessons of that series. Nearly 600 videos, nearly 600 jam tracks, lots of blues. Um, that's where you want to learn that stuff. Uh, but yes, indeed, lots of licks in there. Or if you really want to, if you don't, if you don't want to, you know, invest in the Unstoppable Guitar System, uh, I have a blues ebook that you can find at yourguitarsage.com. Just go to the ebook section. It's called uh, Blues Ebook or something like that, something about the blues. I forgot what I titled it. Uh, but all that to say, I'll be giving that away to several winners today. So uh, for folks that share this, at the end of these broadcasts, we always pick several winners randomly, and we give away CDs, we give away uh, hand-signed books, we give away hand-signed, what what, or foot-signed, whatever you want. You know, autographed books, autographed um, CDs, uh, ebook bundles and like I say the Dan Electra is going away today too so oh thank you Spite Discovery thank you so much favorite teacher I appreciate that uh, are you always hitting the lower bass strings on the up strums or does it depend on the song Will it's a great question and it depends on the song I do cover that in the free course but but yes I it, it really does depend on the song uh, for for Folsom Prison I'm doing like a, a <laughs> It's like that first hit is like low, low notes. And then the 
other ones are kind of higher up. So could you talk about the accents on the strumming? Okay, we did that one, Mary Beth. Um, so these, you know, I'm, I'm reading the chat and I'm trying to go as quickly as possible. So I know you, you probably know that I covered that as well. Not uh, disparaging anybody. Uh, some tips for dexterity. Look, another one that's in the free course. Yes, my friend, it's in the free course. YourGuitarStage.com slash 30. I won't go over it now because I do, I've done that so many times now and I'm giving it to you for free in a lot more detail in the free course. YourGuitarStage.com slash 30. Uh, John Sherrick, what's up, Sage? Didn't miss the whole thing. I was welding. That's all right, John, because this will be recorded afterwards, okay? Um, you know what we need to do? In fact, I'm going to tell Chris, my faithful uh, right-hand man, that we need to have these PDFs on Dropbox for you guys um, because when these broadcasts go away, they change. So, Chris, if you would, write that down because that's something that I want to do for you guys in the, in the future because in 10 years from now, if someone's watching this video, I'd love for them to be able to download that PDF. So, um, I'll try to make that happen for you guys, okay? Because um, I know these PDFs are very helpful. Also, if you hadn't noticed this, there's another link that's in the description of these videos that's giving you access... Listen, it's giving you access to the Unstoppable Guitar System. Not full access, but a lot of the videos that aren't even in the free course that are in, that are in other parts of the course. So uh, make sure you check that out. Okay? Good. All right. Um, please make one big change to your teaching techniques. No one likes tedium and boredom. See, see next post. Please make one big change. Okay, Ducati is saying, Ducati Frederick. Ducati, we're teaching basics, my friend. So unless you have all your basics down, well, then you're watching the wrong broadcast. That's why it says basics that everybody, that many guitar players skip and regret. So I appreciate your comment. Uh, but unfortunately, when you're doing basics, and if you know the basics already, it might seem... I think you meant tedious, not tedium. I don't know what tedium means. Um, but I'm guessing that's what you meant is tedious, Ducati. But I will see you next post. I'm not even sure what that means, next post. But um, I'll see you there. Uh, okay, um, Ducati. Include an easy two or three song to practice with any lesson. For today's lesson, each of the strum pattern, each of the strum pattern, patterns would be fun if we could practice them while playing in a simple tune. Okay? Okay. Uh, Ducati, I do teach that. In, see, I wouldn't do that for this because I have like a thousand songs that I teach on YouTube. So I think Ducati may be new to your guitar stage because I have so many songs that I teach online uh, where I'm teaching these, these strumming techniques. And one strumming technique that I, and one pattern will match like 5,000 different songs. So it's like, and now I'm picking songs that you're going to like, but then Joe isn't going to like, and Tim's not going to like, and Susie's not going to like. So I try not to get into that. Um, but I appreciate what you're saying, you know. Um, Rahan, I've seen blues players slide down the neck at the end of a phrase or a lick. It sounds, it sounds and looks super cool. What are the basics of that? Can you show a basic lick that I can practice? Rihan, um, really, we're just moving from one place to another. So you could do this with any lick, okay? So, you know, if let's say I'm going, um, you know. <laughs> I'm not used to this neck. Is that what you mean? Like... You know, what you're doing there is you're, you're hitting a string down low. And you're just hitting it and sliding up. It's something that, that really... I wouldn't even practice right now, to be honest with you. I'd practice the basics. That's almost like, like uh, if you're a race car driver and you're like, how do they do the donuts at the end? I just want to do that. Well, learn to drive first, and then you'll eventually be doing the donuts because it'll happen naturally. So when they do that, it's not like anybody teaches that technique. It's just like, <coughs> it's just stuff you do. You slide the string you know, with your pick or that sort of thing. Um, so that sort of thing will come natural as you get to as you get to playing more. But yeah, it is a, it's a cool sound. I, I know what you're talking about. I love it. I find it hard to upstroke during strumming. Should I need to strum all the chords on my upward strumming? I'm not sure if I understand that question, Baskar. Uh, but here's the deal, Baskar. 
you've got this and you've got the PDF that I've created, but I'm telling you, right now, you got to do it. Open up another tab, yourguitarstage.com slash 30. That free course that I've created for you will painstakingly walk you, painstakingly for me, not you. I've created something that will absolutely show you how to do this, okay? It's going to get you through it. You just need more, more practice. That's all it is. Bob is saying, Eric, uh, should electric <clears throat> guitars be humidified like acoustics? Not as not as badly. They're they're not as uh, vulnerable to the heat or to the humidity as acoustics are. But it's it's important, you know. Uh, Sarah said Ducati kind of had a good point though. Yes, indeed, he had a great point um, in regards to you know not the boredom part because that's it's like if I'm teaching math, if I'm teaching addition to kids that don't know addition and you know algebra, well then you're watching the wrong video. So I still stand by that. Uh, however, uh, songs that have these strumming bits, I'm telling you that. I'm teaching all those songs already, so you just need to, uh, if you're not already, subscribe to me on YouTube and then follow those, wa like watch those, because I teach in all those acoustic videos, I'm teaching you strumming. Okay, and this is number five on the, the course, that sort of thing, so you got to do it, that, okay? Do it, do it, do it. All right, great, uh, great uh, question. Um, great, great questions. You guys are killing it today, man. Uh, you don't think I'm boring. I watch you because you remind me of Ryan Reynolds. I get that a lot. Um, he's he's a, a really cool guy. I follow him on, on social media. I think he's funny. Uh, e was wondering if the guitar was ready for sale yet. Jeff, just, okay, so here you go, friends. Uh, I just got this information yesterday. I am going with a different manufacturer because the guys that I was going with, who I love and I'm still in cahoots with, um, it's turning out that they are not, I, I basically have the body built already, but it's just going too slow. So uh, we're, we're actually going to somebody else. I'm still in cahoots with them and I love them and, and all the rest, but I'm going with a bigger builder. Um, and I'm not, I'm not going to announce that yet because I've yet to talk to them. I mean, I've talked to them before at guitar shows and what have you and kicked around the idea and they said, yeah, we would be welcome to that, but I haven't officially done it. So we're not officially in the realms yet, but, um, so that's where we're at. We're at right now. We're on hold, but not for long. Okay. That's the answer to that. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for the, the kind words. A lot of, lot of real kind words here. You said Chris was a faithful right-hand man, but have you tested him fully? You need to test his faith. Maybe see if he will let you catch him when he falls backwards. <laughs> yeah, right? Do a faithful. Um, okay. Is that what they call it? Faithful? Yeah, something like that. Uh... <laughs> Jerry likes to see how high I can get my hair. I know I'm trying to. I'm. I, I am doing the same thing. Or I. You're talking about me. Um, doing the same thing as Conan. I really like to get the hair high. Arg, for example, just one post, a uh, three chord song, not a video to use a practice with, with, today's level five strumming pattern. Okay, okay. So, Ducati saying. Okay, so one, two, and let's see. Uh, let me see. God. Um. Okay, here you go, Ducati. Maybe you don't know this song. This is why I don't throw these songs out there. Kids by um, by MGMT. Do you know that song? Kids by MGMT. It goes like this. It goes... Um, Minor, C, G, D. There's your song, buddy. And I do teach that one on YouTube. So if you don't know the song, it's a beautiful song. I would suggest watching that video. Uh, let me know if um, let me know if you need something else on that Ducati. I want, to get, I want to get you all set up, you know. I live in a fairly hot country in the summer's first two frets of the low E string of my guitar start buzzing. What could be the reason? Well, your neck is bending, and uh, that happens. And so what I do 
uh, periodically is I will have my guitars adjusted and some uh, like a lot of like real high end pros like studio players and what have you will actually have their guitars um, adjusted typically twice a year, uh, usually when going you know in the in the spring and in the fall to, to get the guitar used to acclim acclimating to the new uh, weather. Uh, so you you take that to a store and they will do that. Would a hot EMG pickup sound good for blues? No, probably not. Uh, the thing about EMG that's so cool is they look cool. They look cool. And that's why everybody loves them. Everybody's like, EMG, EMG, EMG. I've played EMGs, and I think they, they, they're they okay. I mean, they're pickups, you know what I mean? Um, but no, uh, they, it might, they might have a great bluesy pickup. I'm not knocking EMG per se, but, uh, you know, a good P90 pickup or a, a single coil like that you find in strats and stuff, those are really good for blues. I love those. But again, it's all a matter of opinion, too. So what I like, somebody else may not like, you know. I have a problem, though. Um, yes, I'm a Jap. Yes, I am a Jap. Yes, I am Jap. I love that. That's amazing. Yes, I am Jap. I do have a problem, though. I don't know how to use the pick. I've been using my thumb to strum for decades, right? I told you this would happen. And my index finger to up strum. It's a bad habit that I can't seem to break. What do I do? Yes, I am a Jap. This is what you want to do. It's like video three or four in the free series. YourGuitarStage.com slash 30. I talk all about how to properly hold the guitar, how to properly sit, how to properly use a pick, and a bunch of other things that really are going to lay the foundation for you just getting in there with the pick. Because, yes, it's a very common thing. People just kind of noodle with their, their first finger or their thumb, and then they're like, well, now I can't use a pick because I'm not used to it, you know? That's what you want to do, my friend. Um, okay, great. Okay, Ducati. Yay! Okay, so he knows that one. Yay, Ducati. Okay, I'm so glad I could help you out with that, bud. But like I said, you know, Ducati, here's the thing to do. On my YouTube channel, or just on YouTube in general, and this could be anybody, type in Your Guitar Sage and then the name of the artists that you like. So Your Guitar Sage Elvis, Your Guitar Sage Clash, Your Guitar Sage Beatles, Your Guitar Sage MGMT, whatever. And see, chances are I have a song by one of these artists if I have like a thousand songs up there, popular songs, right? Uh, so do that. I have a thousand videos, not a thousand songs, but many of them are songs. So Ducati, do that. Or if you have a technique, Your Guitar Sage Finger Picking, Your Guitar Sage Blues, that sort of thing, and you'll find out what it is you're looking for right away. So thank you for letting me know that that worked, my friend. Uh, Mary Beth, what's my favorite uh, strumming pattern is the one that I just showed Ducati, the, 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 number, the last one on, on five. That's my favorite one. Uh, I do have a video on that MGMT song. I think I have it as a strumming one, and then I think I have it um, uh, from finger picking. slightly out of tune but it's okay um, and in fact Ducati it may only be a finger picking song I might not have done any strumming on that so let me think about this one for a second so let's see I know I teach grapevine fires by death cab for cutie mm -hmm. Da, 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 one, two, and, and four, and, and that has that strumming rhythm, except it's it's swung. So it's yeah. So that's so if I taught that Ducati only in finger picking for the kids tune, check out Grape Vine Fires. Grape Vine Fires. Say hi to my bass player who joined today, Bobby T. What's up, Bobby T? It's funny that you mentioned the P90s because I was going to ask if you had a Les Paul with P90s by any chance. I don't today. I've got my B&G guitar that has P90s. And, oh, I take that back. <laughs> I have this Les Paul. Oops, I forgot this one. This one has a P90 in it. Um, I'm giving this guitar away as well. 
This is a very, this is, in fact, this is, this is the most expensive guitar that I've ever given away. This is like a $2,500 guitar, and I'm saving this for a really, really good occasion. We'll probably do this at Christmas, but this is, uh, this is the Les Paul Darkfire, and it's an absolute, you can look it up online, and this is the first edition, has robot tuners, uh, it's, this thing is insane. It, it, it does everything. It's, uh, if you know what plecking is, plek, P-L-E-K, that's a, that's a, a, a way that they set the neck up to be laser perfect. They literally use lasers to do this. Lasers. And, um, and, it, and it's a, a remarkable guitar. I'll be giving that away. But that has P90s in it. This has P90s in it. That's, that's the great sound that we're hearing here right now, you know. <laughs> That's a cool kind of gritty sound. Um, all right, great, great. Are all of the guitars you give away right-handed? Yes, Bethany. Sorry. Well, no, I take that. I take that back, Bethany. No. In fact. I tell you what, no, some of them are not. Now, if they're ones that are here, like like um, this particular one, I'll be giving this one away, and this this is a righty. But sometimes what we'll do is I might have one in the studio here, but then I'll have it drop shipped from another location, and in that case, we probably could get a lefty. So no, not all of them are left-handed. So stay tuned, okay? Uh, and and um, we might be able to work something else out, even if you win, you know, if you were to win this one and you're a lefty, I'm sure we can work something out, okay? Uh, okay, great, great questions. Uh, make sure you put a question mark after those questions because I'm looking for the question mark. This chat's moving too quick. Can you tell us how to strum, pick, uh, to strum and pick at the same time? I don't know how to answer that because that's what you're doing. You're doing both of those. You'll have to be a little bit more detailed about that question, my friend. Um, how long have you been playing guitar for? I've been playing guitar f since I was 14. I am 48, so about 34 years-ish. It's been a while. I can't type in YouTube, Eric's Strum Pattern 5. It won't return the matching of the songs. Uh, that's what's missing. Oh, I got what you're saying. Um, Yeah, I don't know how to help you other than that, Ducati. I, there's not a way to search for it during that. What you want to do, Ducati, is just watch some of those favorite videos. I'm telling you, it's like in 70 to 80% of the songs that I teach on YouTube. So you're just going to run into them, you know. Do this, Ducati. Search for songs that you like and just learn those songs and chances are it's going to be that strumming pat pattern. Uh, Deborah's saying, I'm trying to get good with multiple instruments. Will that help or hinder? It will help in that you're gonna have a better understanding, a more thorough understanding of music. Uh, also, you're moving your fingers and you're thinking theoretically and stuff, so it's gonna give you like another layer. Uh, where it could hinder you is if you spend an hour on the piano and then an hour on the guitar, you could have spent two hours on the guitar. That's the only way it might hinder you, but you know, I don't, still don't think it'll hinder you. Where do you get all the stuff that you give away from? Um, I buy it, sometimes it's given to me. This particular guitar was given to me from um, Dan Electro, and they, they gave it to me to keep, but uh, I've got so many guitars and only so many spaces to put them, and I love giving stuff away. So, you know, they didn't say to, to not keep it or give it away. They just, it's, I decided I wanted to give it away after I did a review for it. So, um, but yeah, I get, I get them from different folks, and, um, and I buy some of them. Like that Dark Fire was purchased. Um, the B and G was given to me. This one was given to me. The Schecter uh, that we just gave away. That was I bought that. My Les Paul bought that. So uh, maybe half and half. Um, okay, that's a pretty one. We need to give it that way. Probably I'm probably going to give that one away in December. Okay, real quick, going through these questions. 
uh, some folks are, are probably needing to head out here because we've been on for over an hour. So let me go over a couple things really quickly with you, okay? Although we got a ton of people still watching. Let me go over some things with you really quickly. Share this video. Please, please, please share this video. If you haven't already, like it, obviously. If you haven't already, subscribe. If you're on my Facebook page, like that. Subscribe. All that good stuff. Turn your notifications on for live broadcast, all that stuff. Uh, May the 19th, we're doing a live broadcast. I'll be giving this away. Uh, I'll be teaching you... Uh, chords, basically a, a mental way to understand. I'll be teaching you 120 chords. I promise you, when you walk away from this broadcast, you will have 120 chords to put in your pocket, um, basically to put in your head. It, they will be there. You won't forget them because I'm going to teach you a method using some colors and stuff. It's going to blow your mind. Uh, May the 19th, I'll be giving away thousands of dollars worth of goodies as well, including this guitar, uh, guitar pedals by Dan Electro, lifetime memberships, the Unstoppable Guitar System, and so on and so on. Uh, share this video with the free course, yourguitarstage.com slash 30. Uh, all my gear stuff, if you want to know anything about gear, suggestions, that sort of thing, uh, kit.com slash yourguitarstage. Uh, there it is. There's the dealio right on the screen there for you. Okay. Let's get back to some questions here. So if anybody needs to go away now, that's okay. Love you. Thank you so much for joining us. Otherwise, we're going to keep going here for a few. Okay. Uh, Evan, can you have that guitar with the P90s? Possibly so, my friend. Some say that you have to tilt the pick to a certain angle to make the strumming sound better and smoother, correct, or does it matter? Uh, you know, it naturally happens. Yeah, most people don't hold it straight. They, they, typically, they typically will hold the pick a little bit lighter so that it, it angles both ways. Come to mama. <laughs> Jerry likes the dark fire, right? Uh, got an opinion of the Fender 62 Strat American versus China, Mexico, or where they make them. Mark, uh, you know, here's the deal. Americans are obviously the, they're made, they're the best quality of the three or four different places you can get them, Korea and Mexico and uh, China, that sort of thing. Um, I, in fact, I didn't. I didn't know they made a, a Chinese one, but maybe they do. Uh, but nonetheless, the American one is going to have the best quality. With that being said, the Mexican Strats seem to be the ones that have the best bang for the buck. So they're they're affordable. They're not the cheapest, but they don't chintz. They don't cheap out on the stuff that needs to to, to be good. Uh, I've owned several Mexican strats and they were great. I've owned many American strats as well and uh, the Mexican strats played fantastic and they sounded great. So, um, Can you discuss maintaining your rhythm while passing over the strings? Uh, Monty, we just went over that in detail. So uh, you'll want to watch this video again. Monty, make sure you download the free PDF that I have here. It's in the description of the video. And by all means, if you haven't done this already and you can hear my voice, you qualify for the free course that I'm giving you at yourguitarsage.com slash 30. I'm telling you, go through that course. If you do nothing else for yourself for guitar, get yourself a decent guitar and watch that course. I promise you, okay, we've literally had 100,000 people go through that and or close to 100,000 people and we've had so many folks say, Dude, I've learned so much from that. Do it. You will not be sorry. All right. Having a recital in June, just learning to talk. Do you have a simple blues lick I can play? Della. A simple blues lick that I can play. Della, I would... On YouTube, I would, you know, I'll give you one here in just a second, but on YouTube, I would search Your Guitar Sage Blues. Okay, do that. But a simple lick that you could play. The, the number one blues lick is this, or some version of this. <laughs> Bending the, the seventh fret of the third string, a whole step, and then I'm playing the fifth frets of strings uh, two, one, two. 
and then I've got my pinky bending the eighth fret of the second string a whole a whole step with some vibrato. You know, there's a million different ways to play that same lick, um, and maybe not a million, but there's several and or variations of that, and so. There's, there's there's so much that can be done with the blues, you know. But that's a that's a good one that you could start with, you know. Rah uh, Rahan is saying, can you tell a basic practice exercise to learn hybrid picking? I mean, you use a pick and also fingers on the high strings. How to do that, uh, Rahan? So a great technique is to just use, you know, what hybrid picking is when you have the pick in your your, you know typically in your first finger and thumb, and then you use fingers two, or using fingers, your middle and your ring finger to pick the other notes, like. Uh, you know, so, but one, you know, way, one way that you can practice that is just pick with your, your first, you know, with a pick, and then use your second finger to practice something like this. And you can practice anything like that, but. but. You know, and then you can get into some really cool stuff like. I'm not very good at hybrid picking. I can do some little bits and pieces, but there are some guys out there, got some guys and gals that are really, really, really good at, especially country players. I'm not very good country player, so. Um, but that's the basic idea of that. I'm still working on your Nashville number system. Can you talk on that? Jeff, I'll give you a real brief overview of it, and it's not enough to really teach it. I have videos on this inside my courses, but then on YouTube as well. So on YouTube, just type in your guitar stage Nashville or number system or something like that. But real quickly, um, let's talk about it. Basic, the basic idea of the Nashville number system, if you don't know it, you need to. It's absolutely revolutionary uh, in helping you to understand music. You have the scale, the major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, okay? I have videos for that on YouTube as well. Each chord is assigned each note is assigned a chord, and each chord has a certain flavor. So number one is major, number two is minor, three is minor, four is major, five is major, six is minor, seven is diminished. You know this already, but you don't. You've played songs like this that have these chords in them, and you're like, wow, I always see those same chords together. That's because of this. The national number system describes why that is. So if I have my scale, I can play my chords the same way. I'm just playing, instead of each note, I'm playing a chord. So it goes major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, major. So it'd be major one, minor two, minor three, major four, major five, minor six, diminished seven. And then back to the one again. And you can do this for any any key, it doesn't matter, it's the same. So if we did the key of C, we have major one, minor two, minor three, major four, major five, minor six, diminished seven, and then one again. That's the basic of it. But watch that, Jeff, on YouTube. That'll help a, a ton. I'm having trouble with John with John Mayer, who isn't, uh, who says picking, who who says picking. Do you have any tips? I'm gonna read that again. I'm having trouble with John Mayer, who says picking. Do you have any tips? I don't know what that means. I'm sorry. You, if you can rephrase that, I don't know what that means. How do I sign up for the giveaway? Are you randomly choosing someone on the 19th? We randomly choose someone who has registered for the broadcast. 
We don't have the link up yet. We don't have the sign up yet, but it's going to be up soon. Just mark your calendar. Give yourself a little reminder. I'd love if we had it up now, but we don't. I tell you what, you can go, uh, I believe you can go to yourguitarstage.com slash live. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check it out real quick to see if we can do this. Um, but usually you can go there and you can sign up ahead of time. I'm gonna see if you can right now. I don't think you can because I think we have information up there from the last broadcast. Um, be cool if I spelled my URL correctly. All right. Man, a lot of questions here on, on, on YouTube today. Fantastic. Oh, there you go. Yes, you can go there right now. Um, go to yourguitarsage.com slash live. And you can sign up there. So sign me up now. And if you do that, then we will let you know when the broadcasts are. Uh, give you a heads up so you can get signed up and all that good stuff. Cool? Yeah. What's the proper technique for strumming without a pick? There's not, you know, you use your thumb and you do this. It sounds like poo poo and no one wants to see you play live. So use a pick and watch the, the free 30 series. That's gonna get you how to do it. What's the difference in pick, weight, thickness, size? It's just personal preference or the different picks needed for different sounds? That's a great question. Again, remember I said all these questions are answered in that free series. That's where it's at. And the only reason I'm not gonna, I'll give you a real, brief synopsis of it, uh, but if you want more detail, go to the free guitar series, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. Um, the more strings you're hitting, or the wildly, the more wildly you're hitting the strings, the thinner the pick, basically. If you're being more intricate, more specific, you're using, you're playing on single strings, use a thicker pick. That's the basic idea. What helps inspire you when you feel like you're going through an artist's block? I listen to my favorite artists or I try to get some new music. I watch videos, old videos of, of favorite artists, those sorts of things, or just videos of artists, and that inspires me a ton. Listening to, um, just listening to all sorts of great stuff, you know, that's always inspired me. Uh, Zep uses that lick in Since I've Been Loving You, right? I, knew, I could hear it. Oh, let's see, uh, is it, uh... Something like that, I don't know, right? I don't know if that's even correct, but I don't even know if that's a song. Yeah, yeah, Since I've Been Loving You, right? Exactly. That Now, see, what I did is I did... And, and when I played it, it... I, I could hear it was Zeppelin-esque as well, because he uses that all the time. How about Stairway to Heaven? So his first few notes are... So that's, stair, that's Stairway to Heaven. Or um, You Shook Me All Night Long. So like these are all licks that are all over the map. I mean, it's all the same stuff, right? But they're like all different artists are using the same bits. Um, but yeah, since I love that, love that tune as well. Jeff, when am I coming to the Boston area? I've never been to Boston, I don't think, ever. And I've been up that way. I remember as a kid we went through that, but I've never been to Boston. How about that? I need to. I got a buddy who teaches there and Got lots of friends there as well. So what's the correct fingering for the B7 chord? This is in the free course, my friend, the, 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 the uh, nine chords that you gotta know. But basically, this is it right here. That's your B7 chord. It basically looks like a G chord. Here's how to think about it, Ron, is take a G chord. Go back one fret. Take these two, fir these two first fingers, drop them down one string. Take your third finger, pop it up one string. That's the proper way to play a B7. At least that form of it, and I say proper, that's the one that most people use because it, it just works a lot. It works well, I should say. 
Evan. I think the question someone asked about John Mayer was aimed at his song, Who Says? Oh, and how to pick it. Oh, gotcha. Oh, my gotcha. Uh, yes, I know that song. Who says you can't get stoned? Da -da 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 -da. I don't know how to play that song, so I, I wouldn't know for sure. Sorry. Uh, although I think it's finger picking, pretty sure. Right. How do you pull off a ghost note? Well, a ghost note is a note that's like played either very lightly or not played at all. Uh, so in and of itself, a pull off is a ghost note because you're kind of, it's kind of a, you know. I guess the, the lighter it is, the more ghosty it is, right? That's basically what a ghost note means, you know. Uh, I found your channel this week and learned Hurt So Good through your video lesson. Thank you. You seem like a cool guy. Thank you, Tosta. I appreciate that. It's very kind of you. I hope I am. So my ex-wife doesn't think so. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. If I'm a cool guy. No, does anybody know if they're cool or not cool? I think everybody thinks they're cool. Got to ask their friends. Uh, maybe not ask their friends. Uh, how, do, how, do you, how do you mix picking and strumming? Uh, Kathy, well, so that's just, ta that's just practice. So, for instance, if I wanted to go, um, let's see. Um, let's see. So I, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm getting closer and more specific with the strings that I'm picking uh, when I'm picking individual notes. But then when I'm going for the strum, of course, I'm getting big like this. That's that tune, man. Make sense so you just kind of come into the strings a little bit more get more intricate but it really bottom line if you just said practice that would cover it i know you're looking for something else but it's always that uh, mark is saying thanks for the answer and thanks for the free and good information don't know if you spoke on this but can you speak a little about the cage system does that help to know the notes down the neck it does uh, it helps to know the, the notes up the neck mark and i have a whole video for that the reason i won't talk about that today i'll give you a basic overview, but uh, the reason I won't go into detail of that is because I think that lesson's like 20 minutes long and we don't have the time for that today. But the idea of the cage system, friends, is basically what we're doing is we're taking the five basic open chords, C, A, G, E, and D. And we're using those chords up the neck to play five variations of the same exact chord by name. So for instance, this is a C chord with a C formation. This is a C chord with an A formation. Because it looks like the A chord. This is a C chord with a G formation. Because it looks like a G chord. Here's a C chord with the E formation. Because it looks like an E chord. Here's a C chord with a D formation. Because it looks like the D chord. Okay, so basically it just gives us a, the opportunity to play the same chords all over the neck. Now I teach this in a lot more detail inside the Unstoppable Guitar System where I'm teaching you minor chords and minor seventh chords and seventh chords and whole enchilada. But I have a video for this on YouTube. Just type in Your Guitar Sage Caged and you'll get it. And it'll give you lots of detail. And yes, it's awesome. It's it's you got to know it. Um, not right away. Do the fir the thirty lessons first, then do that one. When you play chords low on the neck, how do you know what to play higher on the neck by doing by the cage system, uh, and by repetition, just learning you know knowing where things are at. But here's the deal: that free course that I'm talking about, it teaches you the notes on the neck in a way that you're not going to forget. And that kind of that's the that's the step one to it. The cage system helps a lot too. It helps you to know where these chords are at all the time. C chord. You know, uh, a a minor chord. Or oh, sorry. There's a bunch of different ways to play these chords all over up and down the neck. That's that's how it, that's how to do it. Man, you guys are killing it on YouTube, man. That's where all my questions are at. What's a ghost bend and a, and a tone bend? Never heard of either of those. 
of, sorry, I don't know what that means, Le learned Cohen. Yep, that's what I was doing. Do you know how to tune by ear? Yeah, uh, and I have a lesson for that as well, Sarah. And, and just on YouTube, type in your guitar stage, tune ear. When you pull off, is that exactly what you do or do you kind of flick that note? It's a great question, Bob. Um, you finger pick the note with the fretting hand. So if you didn't have nails, right? Well, I have nails. It'd be like I'm doing this. But I'm doing it with, in this case here, with my pinky, second or third finger, and I'm going. As a technique that takes a little getting used to because there's a tendency to want to pull both fingers off instead of just the one finger. Is that a chicken pick? Um, it is a chi is this a chicken pick? How did you know this was a chicken pick? Someone has like super insane eyes. Evan, how did you know that was a chicken pick? Dear Lord in heaven above. It's a chicken pick. Yes, it is. Uh, I've got a few of these laying around. These kind folks at Chicken Pick send these to me and they're really cool. I dig them. This is a very thick pick. This is a 2.7, but yeah. Um, yes. Best Les Paul type guitar under 220. Um, I would say go with an Epiphone Les Paul. Those are, that's going to be your best bet. When you say don't trust the man, who are you referring to? That's a great question, Bob. I think you know who I'm talking about. Uh, no, but don't trust the man. When I say that, it just refers to anybody who is in authority that maybe should not be an authority or, and I'm not really not talking about anybody specific. I know a ton of people, they're going Trump. I'm not talking about anybody specifically because I, I, I try not to get too opinionated about Trump or anybody else for that matter because there's good and bad in all people and there's a lot of huff and puff and stuff like that on Facebook and I don't believe any of that crap. I do my own research and anybody who doesn't is in the same boat as those idiots who are talking on Facebook who are, think they know everything, sorry opinion. Um, <laughs> so don't trust the man really just means, um, you know, question, question authority. That's all it means. It, authority may be totally right. It just means question it. That's all. Don't trust the man by face value. It just means do your own research. That's all. Okay. The man's right sometimes. Sometimes the woman's right. Talk about. I did skip a lot and do regret it. Thanks for filling in the holes. Jeff is saying, I really do love the, the uh, Unstoppable Guitar System. He said Ultimate, but, but it's called uh, Unstoppable. A lot of people get that mixed up because there's the website, Ultimate Guitar, uh, which is cool too. And I uh, think everyone should get it because it really does make you a better player. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate that, bud. Yay. Thank you, Aman. Thank you, Sarah. Big Brother's always watching, indeed. Uh, maple neck or rosewood neck better on Stratocaster? Is it a matter of preference only? It's a matter of preference. Uh, I saw someone post something the other day, and it was like something about a maple neck on a Strat, and it was like real, it was a funny meme or something saying it was terrible, but it it's a matter of opinion. People get, they get so worried about stuff like that instead of just playing well, and they blame it on necks and strings and stuff. Just play play a lot and it won't matter what you're playing. Eddie Van Halen said that. Somebody said, "How do you what are you doing to your guitar? How do you make it sound like that?" And he said, "Give me your guitar and I'll make it sound like that." Cuz it's true. It has to do with the the playing. So much of it has to do with that. Kathy saying, "Can you do more play alongs where we play with you? Also camera positioning helps a lot to get the fingering strumming correctly." Kathy, yeah, I'll think about that. Um, I'm doing that more with like with like blues and that sort of thing. So yes, I definitely will will think about that and do that more. Uh, Joel is saying, I'm learning and I'm trying finger picking exercise. It always sounds dull. Do you need long nails to pick the strings? Uh, Joe, uh, Joe, sorry, not Joel. Um, Joe, yes, it's helpful. Um, it's unfortunate on steel strings because it can, it can hang on your nail a lot. That's why nylon strings are basically meant for for nails uh, but when it comes to steel strings it's a little bit you, you you have to constantly polish your nails otherwise they'll they'll which i don't so my nails are constantly coming off i need to polish them more uh, but yes it'll make it sound nicer for sure eric uh you demand but in e we trust <laughs> thanks man yes yes the question marks yes do okay great um 
that's all the questions I'm doing on YouTube. I'm heading over, or what's my favorite bands? Um, my favorite bands. Okay, I'll go over that real quick, Sarah, and then no more questions on YouTube. Then I'm heading over to, to Facebook, make sure we hadn't missed any questions there, and then we'll be heading out, okay, for today. Uh, my favorite bands, uh, uh, Zeppelin, ACDC, um, Beatles, Iron Maiden, Radiohead, Muse, um, Sam Phillips, uh, the newer Sam Phillips. Um, I know that's a, no one knows who that is, but um, I love her. Um, Elvis Costello. I have so many. Elvis, I, really, the list would go on so, so long, you know. All right, that's it. All right, here I go. I'm, I'm going away from YouTube. Uh, if I didn't answer your question, I'm sorry. That means you just you just placed it just now, your question. Um, okay, so here I go. I'm jumping over to Facebook real quick and just make sure we don't have any other questions there. And then that's it. Can you close out with a Def Leppard song? Maybe so. I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can come up with there. Uh, and you, and uh, yeah, I'm going to restart Facebook here because it's being kind of, kind of wacky here. Um, <laughs> I'm just doing that by memory from when I was 14. That was the first song that I ever learned. That's fooling. very dissonant, but it's beautiful, right? Uh, okay. Yeah, you're so welcome, Jerry. Can you show me how you combine the pentatonic scale with the regular modes when playing soloing? Uh, Dorian, Dorian, Aeolian, or uh, Aeonian, Dorian. Mike, unless you love jazz, don't worry about the modes. It's a lot of buzz about modes. Modes, 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 modes. Modes are going to make me sound good. Modes are not going to make you sound good unless you're playing jazz. Modes essentially are saying that you're going outside of the scale because of a chord, because of the, the, the flavor of a chord. And that's what gives jazz its sound. That's one of the reasons, but that's the main reason. That's why jazz, a lot of people that don't like jazz, um, they listen to it, they're like, wow, that sounds dissonant. It's because they're using modes. They're going outside of the scale. The stuff that sounds very melodic that's not like that is staying within the scale for the most part. And really, since the pentatonic scale is part of the major scale, really, it's not going to sound any different than, um, I mean, you could be very, very pentatonic and then very diatonic, and that would, then you'd hear the difference there, and I'll do that here for you in just a second. But for the most part, you know, guitar players are doing this all the time and not really thinking about it. They're just the notes there, and they're like, oh, I want that note. Well, that one note's out of the diatonic, so now it's a diatonic scale. But uh, an example would be this. If I was a uh, if I was playing, um, let's see. Let's see. Um, Tonically. Diatonically would be. So, 
you know, you can go in and out of all those, and and you're really not going to hear too much of a difference. It's not like it's you know some massive like change in sound if that makes any sense. You know, uh, Chris is saying I got your full course and it's awesome. I've been going back to the basics since I've learned to play by ear. Thank you so much for your time to teach. Much appreciation. You're so welcome, Chris. Um, yay, thank you, Kim, for the kind words. Why do so many singer-songwriters use a capo so often? Kim, because it, it, watch my video. So great question, Kim. And guys, I told you this, right? All these questions are found in the free course. I'm giving so much to you guys. You got to, I, it hurts me to think that folks are not watching that. Only because I want to help you and I created the product and now it's just sitting there, right there, a click away for you to just take advantage of it. So it's really important that you do that. But I cover that, Kim, in the free course where I'm talking about capos. And the reason that, that folks do that all the time is, it, you know, if I'm playing these open chords, you know, G, D, E minor, or G, D, C, and now I need a capo, well, I can just put the capo up and play it further up the neck. I'm acting like this is the capo, you know. I really need a capo. But that's the idea is that in, we, they can play the same chords, the feel and all that stuff, but yet it, it, it feels the same to them, if that makes any sense, you know? Does the Unstoppable Guitar System come on regular DVD too? No, it doesn't, Linda, because I'm constantly adding new material. So I wouldn't be able to get that new material onto the DVD. So that's why it's streaming. That's why we're constantly adding new stuff to it. So it's living, breathing, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So uh, I don't want to be... Um, kept down by just a DVD, right? It's like I want to put a lot, and plus it's like six, nearly 600 videos and 600 jam tracks. It'd be like, oh my God, how many DVDs would you, you'd have to get like 60 DVDs, right? Uh, what is my best lick? <laughs> I don't know. Probably the... I use that one a lot. I love that, but I don't know. I don't know how to gauge what best would be. Uh... All right, all right, all right. Isn't that the strumming pattern for Cranberry Zombie? Yeah, it probably is, Adam. The the, the last one of, of number five, it probably is, because it is for like 70 to 80% of the songs out there. How do you keep the rhythm and include walk-ups? I have difficulty, I have, I'm having dif uh, difficulty with that uh, on the acoustic. Tim, take your walk-up, take your chords, take your, you know, your two chords that you're going, walking from to, and practice it, but just do it really, really slow. What's happening is you can do it. It's just you can't do it at the speed you're doing it. You've got to slow it down. That is 99% of the answer to anything. Um, is what I'm, you know, 99% of the, of, the, of the issues there are really just slowing things down. Okay. All right. Just checking really quickly, make sure that I hadn't got, I haven't missed anything. One, two, three, and four. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, someone's asking about Ring of Fire. I have a video for that. Watch that instead because I'm not in the mental space to even think about um, to even think about that right now. I don't I don't remember what the strumming pattern is on it. Okay, okay, man. Okay, so you guys are. I think this is for advanced people. Lisa's saying no, it's not. This is real simple stuff. Lisa, but it is difficult at first, so don't worry about it. It's it's difficult at first, okay? You'll get it. My friends, that's it for today. We're done. We went longer than we usually do. Um, don't forget to share this, and uh, don't forget to mark your calendar. Right now, two things I want you to do, two calls to action, or three or four, if, if you will. First thing is, right now, open up another tab and go to yourguitarsage.com slash live. Do that. Uh, the link for that's also in the description of this video, so it'll open up, hopefully open up in another tab, but do that, go, go there and sign up for May the 19th if you want to win this guitar, if you wanna, we're gonna be giving away tons of stuff and I'll be teaching you how to understand the chords. I'll be teaching you 120 new chords. I promise you at the end of that, you'll walk away knowing 120 new chords. You won't not know them. You're going to know them. Okay? I promise you. It's going to be amazing. You're going to have all the chords that you know what to do with. 
so do that. YourGuitarStage.com slash live. If you haven't already, friends, take advantage of me in this free course that I'm offering, YourGuitarStage.com slash 30. It's going to change the way you play guitar, I promise. Uh, the gear store, that's the link for that's in the video the description. Uh, subscribe, like, all that good stuff. We'll be doing some giveaways here shortly. Thank you so much for everybody and your great questions today. You guys played out uh, rock and roll. You guys did great. Thank you so much, and I'm out of here. I'm going to go eat something. <laughs>